The amazing drama you're about to see is a matter of human record. You may believe it or not, but the real people who lived this story, they believe it. They know. They took that one step beyond. The curtains on the window are always drawn. Inside the main house tonight is quite an occasion. In the year the Parrish family has lived in Boston, this is the first time anyone outside the immediate family has been invited to the house. Story about the servants leaving just this morning. Well, goodness, Anna, why shouldn't he? It would hardly enter his head that we've never had servants here. We're all so good at telling lies, aren't we? Well, at least they are lies that hurt no one. Well, you'll be free of me very soon. You'll be married and in New York with Danny. Mama, to have somewhere that's really, really home. After all these years of moving one place to another, everything's frightened. Mama, did I tell you what Danny said to me? <laughs> he said he wanted six children. Of course, I just sat there and stammered and blushed. What's that? It's nothing. It's a... It's a recipe. You know, Danny even has names for them. <laughs> Michael and Eric and David for the Margaret, boys. And the... we'll have the Beaujolais with dinner. Yes, Papa. Well, darling, you better run along upstairs and, and get ready. Yeah. Danny seems to be the kind who never late. <laughs> Not a second. Life must run like clockwork. That's why I love him. Mama. Oh, tonight. Tonight I love the world. Ah! Mama. There seems to be someone in the garden. George, go and see what's happened. You know what has happened. Mama, please, please, don't it! No one can see into that room. Wash your hands. That'll help. Wash my hands. Will that wash away, Jason? I hate him, I hate him, I hate him! Anna! What is it? Come inside. <gasps> Tell me, what is Danny, it? Danny, there is nothing for you to be afraid of. I'd heard stories about her, but I didn't believe them. And then, just now, I saw for myself, sitting in a red velvet chair. That's what was so horrible. In a red velvet chair with a high back, reading a book for all the world like a... Like, like a human a, being. No. What I saw didn't belong inside a house. What I saw belonged in the sea. Danny, you're very young. I hope you will have the compassion to understand. Mama, no! He has to know. He is my son. He's Anna's brother. Danny, I... It happened before he was born. He was born that way? Danny, it is a disease that is not contagious, nor hereditary. Danny, what, what, what Mama says is true. Anna, I can't. Before God, what Mama says is true. Anna, All the that. doctors swore it is I'm not sorry, hereditary. I'm Danny, sorry. please don't leave me. Please I don't can't. leave me. Danny! Danny! <laughs> Time to think. If he really loves you, he will come back. No, 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 he won't. You saw the way he looked at me. He was looking at our babies, and the babies I'll never have because of Jason. I hate him, and I wish he were dead. George. 
George, I... I think I shall send Anna away someplace. Someplace pleasant. It's Jason who must be sent away, No, Margaret. George, not again, not now. Yes, now. George. How long can you be selfish? Each time we've had to move, whenever I've had to look for a new job, you know what agony it's been for him. He'd be happier away from us. There are hospitals that would take him. You don't mean hospitals. He's my son too, Margaret. For the love of God, have some pity for the boy. Pity? Yes, pity! How do you think he feels locked up in the room? I have told you 100 times, I will not let him go. And that's always finished the argument, hasn't it, Margaret? But not tonight. No, not tonight. Yes, George. He will hear you. You cannot ask me to give up my life. At last you said it, Margaret. He is your whole life. Not me, not Anna. Jason, you've no love left for the rest of us. He needs me more. Margaret! I mean what I say. If you don't agree with me now, if you don't agree with me this moment to send Jason away, then I shall leave you. Very kind of you to see me. Who could resist such a letter? I'm surprised, madam, you confide these intimacies to a stranger. As a stranger, you could be of no help to me, Dr. Brown. Madam, let's be clear on this point. I am no longer a doctor. My name has been officially struck from the British Medical Association. I'm not interested in that. All I care about is your knowledge and your talent, Dr. Brown. Sit down, madam. Thank you. I remember hearing of a few such cases as your son's. Well, other doctors have told me that almost every hundred years a child is born with this affliction. You know, Jason says that he has read a theory that that all mankind has evolved from the sea, the cradle of life. But Jason says that perhaps the seed of our beginnings is still with us, and that this is God's way of reminding us that we have not come as far as we would like to think. Cradle of life. Jason sounds a remarkable boy. Madam, why have you come to me? I read of your lecture. Lecture? Lecture, indeed. The papers turned it a riot. The police had to be called. Here, this is what interested me. The jeering began when Brown made claims that his so-called mind force could be efficacious in the treatment yeah, of certain illnesses. I read the account, illnesses. madam. I read it. Particularly ailments of unknown origin. That's why I came, Dr. Brown. Please, will you be... Honest with me, have you been successful? There have been a few cures on many, many failures. What is this mind force? Madam, if I could explain it satisfactorily, I would hardly be in my present position. All I can tell you is that I seem to have developed a kind of power. What it is, I cannot tell you. I'm not the first. There have been others. I think perhaps Dr. Mesmer was the first. This power sounds supernatural. And that would frighten you? I want my son to be well. The means do not concern me. 
Will you dine with us tonight and see Jason? Madam, do I look in such bad need of a meal? I am in such bad need of help. I'm sorry. I thought perhaps another chance of success was vital to you. Madam, I don't believe either one of us could stand another failure. Uh, I haven't had a roast like that in more months than I'd care to say. Anna, did you hear that? Dr. Brown was complimenting you on your cooking. Mama, Papa wrote that he'd seen Danny in New York. It was just by accident on the street. They didn't even speak. Danny crossed the street. Hey, what can be worse than the loss of love? Except perhaps the loss of belief that it can happen again. If you have finished your coffee, Doctor, I will take you to see Jason. Parish. You remember at dinner, I'm talking about my life in England. What are my beliefs? I was made to look a fool. Many people turned their backs on me, including someone I loved most dearly. But now I'm glad it happened. Now I know there was no real love between us. Someone who loves you will not desert you, no matter how severe the test. Do you believe that? I don't know. Perhaps I could help you to believe. Come, lass. Come and sit down. I, perhaps I could help you to believe. Madam, have I your permission to play a game with Anna? You have. Anna, you know I want to be your friend. Give me your hands. Anna. Fix your gaze on a point of light in your ring. Stare at it. Never take your eyes from it. I want you to imagine that I've tied a balloon to your wrist. Imagine that your hand has no weight in it. The balloon is pulling it into the air. Your hand has no weight in it. It can float in the air like a feather. The balloon is tugging up, up, up. That's it. Now, as your hand rises higher, it will come toward your face. Keep staring at that one point of light. Keep staring at it as your hand comes toward your face. You're becoming more and more sleepy. Your poor eyes ache for sleep. But you cannot close them until your hand touches your face. Only then will you sleep. easy with someone so eager to escape. Does she hear us? Only me. What sort of sleep is this? Where is she? I warned you. You remember what I told you about the power the mind has over the body? Let me show you. Anna, now you are even more deeply asleep. You hear nothing but my voice. Yesterday, you had an accident in the kitchen. You scalded the back of your hand with boiling water. The skin is still raw and sensitive from the burn. Touch the back of her hand. Go on, touch it. The burn is healed. The pain is all gone. In 
fact, you have no feeling in your hand whatsoever. The nerves are all dead, the hand is numb. Have you a pin? Will not bleed. Now the hand is as it was, as if the burn had never been. Anna, listen carefully to me. When you wake up, you'll be as happy as you were before Danny went away. You will not forget him. You will only forget the pain of his going away. You will feel the hurt no more. When I count three, you will open your eyes and be wide awake, feeling happier and more rested than you ever have in your life. One, two, three. I was listening to the doctor, and then I... Well, I guess I must have dozed off. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You must think I'm terribly rude. I'm... We'd be a deal healthier if we all took, took a bit of a nap after dinner. Oh. Now, Mrs. Parrish, if you'd be so good as to let me have the key to Jason's room. Yes, of course. Doctor, I think if, if anyone can help Jason, it's you. Thank you. Shouldn't I come with you? You said he was expecting me. Edward Brown. Your mother's kind enough to still call me Dr. Brown, but then I expect you've heard that story. Jason, I feel very much an outcast too. Will you remember that? I need your cooperation if I'm to be of help. Remember this too. We'll be dealing with the unknown. How long it will take and to what end, I know no more than you. It may be frightening, even dangerous. What is worse, futile? Jason, I failed many times. The decision must be yours. Waste no more time. Jason, give me your hands. even on Christmas Eve. Hmm? I think I must have been insane to let that doctor talk me into this. Absolutely insane. Doctor. Dr. Brown, I wonder if he ever was a doctor. Mama. Not even on Christmas Eve am I allowed to see my own son. Now, Mama. He could be dead for all I know. Now, that's silly. 
Do you know the last time that I saw him? It was September the 2nd. And Dr. Brown, since that moment, has had nothing to say at all. Well, that is not true. Why, only last week. Last week? What did he say last week? He seemed very hopeful. Then why doesn't he let me see him? You must trust him. Well, I don't. I don't trust him. I think it's all some kind of a hoax. Jason isn't any different. There isn't any change at all. Well, there's one thing that's changed. I've lost. Jason isn't mine anymore. Well, that's it. Well, that's what's upsetting you, is it, Mama? I am glad you're home, and not just because it's Christmas. I've been so foolish. Margaret, did you actually think our son could be cured by this charlatan's black magic? Papa, Dr. Brown isn't a charlatan. Why, why you only have to meet him to see that. Meet him? I want him out of this house right now. Papa! Where is he? He's with Jason. Get him. But, Papa, I... Get him! I was desperate, George. I know, Margaret. Margaret, I brought someone with me. He's waiting outside. Why? He's from a hospital in New York. No! Margaret, listen to me. No! I've seen the place. No! No, I've lost him once. Never again, never again. Margaret, we'll go down there together. You can see it for yourself. No! I have seen those places, I know. I would rather have Jason dead first. Margaret, all the papers have been signed. No! There's nothing you can do, Margaret. I'm dead. There is something that I can Mama! Do. It was Jason's wish to wait till Christmas. Despite his triumph, Dr. Edward Brown didn't live to see his mind force recognized as a powerful weapon against disease and pain. Only recently has hypnosis been officially admitted to the operating theater or to the office of the psychiatrist. Today we accept hypnosis as fact. Who knows? Perhaps tomorrow, telepathy may be fact. <laughs>